Um, thank you so much for the kind introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you here today to talk about opportunities, challenges, and considerations on, um, for AI applications for climate action. All right, so um, I'm sure this needs an introduction, but as we know, climate change is one of the most pressing challenges that we as a society face today with impacts felt globally. And we know that these impacts are, um, this, uh, these impacts disproportionately affect the most disadvantaged or most vulnerable populations. And according to the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC, in order to um, avoid the most adverse effects of climate change, we need to hit net zero greenhouse gas emissions by, net, by 2050. And this would require rapid and massive transformation across different industries, including energy, transportation, buildings, forestry, and agriculture, among others. So just a quick recap on the state of climate change. Uh, we know that the earth has already warmed over one degree Celsius compared to pre-industrial period. And this is due to the excess greenhouse gas emissions from human um, activities or what we call anthropogenic factors. And these greenhouse gas emissions have induced major changes in our climates, including extreme weather events, like catastrophic typhoons, uh, severe floods, landslides, um, also extreme heat waves, droughts, and wildfires, as we're seeing in the news today. Um, and hitting net zero greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 would limit global warming to around 1.5 degrees Celsius. But beyond this, this, uh, beyond this could lead to a tipping point that could lead to catastrophic and irreversible effects. So now I wanna to talk to you about different axes of action um, that we can need, um, our approaches to addressing climate change. So the first is climate science, which uh, very broadly is the study of the earth, the ocean, and the atmosphere to better understand and predict the extent to which the climate will actually change. So I won't go into too much detail here. So I actually want to um, discuss more uh, mitigation and adaptation. All right, so mitigation is basically um, strategies for reducing or preventing greenhouse gas emissions. And we can think of uh, greenhouse gas emissions as coming from a number of different sources. So we have energy related emissions, uh, which come from the energy supply, transportation, buildings and industry. Um, we also have land use um, emissions coming from agriculture, forestry and other land use. Um, so reducing or preventing greenhouse gas emissions could include, for example, reducing energy consumption, improving and efficiency or switching to clean energy. It could also include reducing fertilizer use, livestock, or improving land use management. Now, another mitigation strategy is CO2 removal, which is concept of negative emissions, which include, for example, a carbon capture and storage technologies, um, strategies for enhancing natural sinks through, for example, afforestation or reforestation. Uh, so now I also want to talk to you about adaptation um, or basically responding to the effects of the changing climate. So this includes, for example, measuring and predicting risk as a function of hazard, exposure, and vulnerability, where hazard is basically the likelihood of um, experiencing a destructive phenomena um, exposure is um, comprises like the um, population or assets or infrastructure that are, are exposed to the hazard and vulnerability being susceptibility to damage. So you can be exposed to a certain hazard without being vulnerable if, for example, you have climate resilient housing. Um, and again, risk is just a function of these three variables, hazard exposure and vulnerability. Um, increasing adaptation also means strengthening um, adaptive capacity in terms of robustness or um, the ability to withstand a range of outcomes with little to no impact, as well as increasing resilience in the event that we can avert the disaster, how quickly can we recover after the impact? So climate change and digital transformation are two of the most powerful trends of this century. And the rise of AI uh, present unprecedented opportunities to support climate action. 
but the, in itself, it also carries risk. And so it needs to be developed responsibly. So now I want to um, very briefly uh, de uh, define these different terms. So artificial intelligence um, basically encompasses algorithms that make predictions or recommendations based on a set of objectives. So it's basically any algorithm that's able to um, complete a complex task um, in ways that mimic human intelligence. And machine learning is a subset of AI um, that relies on vast amounts of information. So it um, encompasses techniques that automatically extract patterns from large amounts of data, which can then be used to make predictions on new data. So um, moving forward, I'll be using these terms interchangeably. Um, just note the subtle difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning. So AI can be applied to a number of climate relevant um, sectors, including um, electricity systems, buildings, transportation, land use, and industry. Um, in the interest of time, I'll only be discussing a few of these, but I highly recommend you check out, um, uh, you check out this paper written by my colleagues at Climate Change AI called Tackling Climate Change with Machine Learning, where they outline all the different ways uh, machine learning can, can be applied um, for different climate relevant sectors. So um, in terms of building in cities, for example, AI can help conserve building energy by enabling low carbon urban planning, energy use modeling, and by optimizing building functions, for example, heating and lighting um, in smart cities. Um, so for example, uh, when I did my research fellowship at the Technical University of Munich, I had uh, the opportunity to um, collaborate with TU Berlin um, and the Mercator um, Institute on Research for Global Commons and Climate Change um, on, how the, on using machine learning um, and satellite images to predict um, building use or occupancy, basically classifying buildings um, uh, depending on whether they are residential or non-residential, um, predicting or estimating building height as well as year of construction. Um, to better, uh, as, as input to energy use models, to better estimate energy, dem energy demands for heating and cooling buildings. In terms of farms and forests, uh, AI can facilitate nature-based solutions, um, precision agriculture, can um, estimate carbon stock, detect illegal deforestation, and accelerate afforestation. And this is usually done um, in conjunction with um, remote sensing technologies or what we call earth observation data, which include, for example, satellite images, drone images, um, and radar sensing technologies. Um, so as an example, we see researchers at the University of Maryland um, and NASA Harvest who are using machine learning uh, for crop type classification, crop um, condition classification, and crop yield estimation using um, AI and satellite and um, um, time series or historical satellite images. In terms of societal adaptation, um, there are a number of different applications. I just listed a few here. Um, so for example, it can be used for biodiversity monitoring and ecological conservation, for example, through species distribution modeling. It can be used to improve public health models for climate influenced diseases like dengue and malaria. Um, in terms of disaster reduction, it can help identify vulnerable or high risk populations um, and, pop and um, infrastructure. And in terms of disaster response, it can help automate the, detec the detection of damaged structures. So as an example, um, in my current project called the Digital Earth for Resilient Housing and Infrastructure um, in the Caribbean um, under the World Bank and GFDRR, uh, we are using drones and uh, drone images and AI to scalably identify high-risk structures and rapidly assess building damage after disaster events in the Caribbean. So my team and I are working with um, uh, governments in Dominica and St. Lucia um, helping to establish GIS units, um, training them how to operate drones, um, to collect very quickly and efficiently collect drone images, manage large scale geospatial data sets, and run the machine learning models that we've developed in order to generate these um, exposure data, critical exposure data sets. So for example, what you're seeing here are uh, roof material classification maps 
based on um, pre and post disaster drone images that we collected for an area in, um, in Dominica. So now I wanna talk about some of the areas of action in government or how government and um, industry leaders can help support responsible AI for climate action in terms of uh, one, data and digital infrastructure, two, research and innovation funding, um, and three, deployment and systems integration. And then lastly, I'll talk about the importance of capacity building and responsible AI. So one of the um, main challenges that we data practitioners face is um, the lack of data or data scarcity. Um, the data that is required for AI applications is often limited, incomplete, inaccessible, or even completely non-existent. Um, and when it is available, um, the data collection is often concentrated in the global north, which could potentially lead to biased models or systems that are optimized for certain regions. Um, another challenge is that the incentives for organizations to share data are often outweighed by the privacy, security, and reputational costs of, and risks of doing so. So some recommendations on this front is one, uh, we need to strengthen fundamental data governance um, by investing in the digital infrastructure and processes needed for consistent and frequent data collection management and processing of massive amounts of data on a nationwide scale. We also need to eliminate data silos across governments and support the development of standards and protocols for um, responsible and secure data sharing. Um, and lastly, I want to um, emphasize the need to create initiatives um, to increase data sharing and access. So for example, international, gov uh, international organizations like the World Bank are creating data portals for easy access to socioeconomic data. So we definitely also need one for climate relevant data sets. Um, in terms of research and innovation funding, there is a need to prioritize um, AI for climate research, focusing on projects that are impact driven um, as opposed to technology driven. And what I mean by this is that we should support projects that illustrate clear, clear pathways to impact as opposed to projects that boast um, more sophisticated or more complex methods, but might not necessarily always be uh, the most impactful. Uh, we should also encourage open IP, open data, and open model development so as to accelerate wider use and wider adoption of the technology. Oh, sorry. Um, in terms of deployment and systems integration, uh, we find that many solutions often get stuck in the pilot phases and face difficulty scaling. Um, could be due to a number of different factors like lack of financial incentives, um, slow adoption could be due to organizational, orga organizational culture or um, legacy systems. So it's important to acknowledge that policy and market play an important role in supporting or blocking AI for climate deployment. And so we do need innovation pathways that ensure routes for, for innovators to deliver and scale revenue from their innovations. Uh, we also need to include AI and digitalization experts into governmental climate policy and advisory teams to ensure that AI considerations are incorporated into policy designs uh, to support a net zero transition. Um, now I wanna talk about capacity building. So earlier I, um, alluded to um, the biases um, that may be present in data and models. So for example, geographic disparities in data collection, the data collection mainly being concentrated in the global north or in more developed regions could lead to systems that are optimized for particular regions. So for example, the 2017 study by um, Meta AI Research, he found that um, uh, widely used um, image recognition systems we're better at identifying household items from, um, from uh, developed countries or countries from the global north than they were at identifying household items um, from low to middle income countries. And therefore there is a need for localized solutions or solutions that take into, um, into, that take into account local context and perspectives. Um, that's why the research need to be asking questions like who will be using the models how will the models be used? What kind of decisions will be made based on the model outcomes? And how will these decisions impact people or systems on the ground? Um, unfortunately, there, dis there does tend to be a disconnect between AI expert and climate relevant sectors. Um, and 
um, which is unfortunate since we do need an interdisciplinary approach that draws insights um, from, um, uh, um, in addition to tec uh, technical experts, domain experts, policy makers, as well as the affected communities. Um, so some recommendations on this front is the need to strengthen local capacity in terms of um, implementing AI literacy programs on a large scale for policymakers, industry leaders, and civil society, help them better understand the requirements, capabilities, and limitations of these AI solutions. And we also need to support interdisciplinary higher education and research programs. So I highly applaud the MS and PhD programs, for example, um, in AI and data science initiated by the UP Diliman and AIM. Um, these can really help bridge um, AI and climate relevant sectors and also help build experts who can translate between fields. Um, and lastly, it would be really great to incorporate curricular elements of data and on climate into primary, secondary, and higher education, given the, um, given the climate emergency, as well as the rapid advancements of AI. Uh, lastly, I want to um, uh, talk about responsible AI in the context of climate change. Um, so first and foremost, I do want to dispel the AI hype um, and urge um, everyone to avoid techno solutionism. Um, AI is not a silver bullet um, and it's not applicable everywhere. AI will not solve climate change by itself. It will not end poverty. And we should only use AI when necessary and truly impactful. So when starting an AI project, the first question I usually ask of course is what problem needs to be solved? Um, the second question I ask is what does a solution look like without AI or without ML? Um, and then once you have that laid out, that's when I start asking like which parts of this process can AI or machine learning optimize? It's based on my, um, my previous experiences, um, AI is extremely effective at taking existing processes and making them faster, more efficient, and more scalable. But of course, you need um, existing mechanisms for action. Which brings me to my second point here, which is that AI is a means and not an end. So AI solutions should, be, should always be informed by problems and societal context. And AI should only be thought of as a component of the solution and not a solution in and of itself. Um, lastly, I want to emphasize that AI can have both positive and negative impacts on the environment as previous, previously discussed um, in previous um, sessions, um, where the energy used from compute intensive resources, um, like the compute uh, resources needed to train these large, langu large language models or LLMs like ChatGPT um, are equivalent to um, to a yearly energy consumption of a thousand of a thousand U.S. Um, household, U.S. households, and this can have negative impacts on the environment. And so, it is important to quantify both negative and positive impacts of um, AI development. For example, using tools like Code Carbon, which allow you to track and monitor um, your carbon emissions from the model development process. Um, so before I end, um, I do want to um, quickly share, if you're interested in learning more about um, the intersection of climate change and AI, uh, please do um, check out our resources at climatechange.ai. Um, we are a global nonprofit working to catalyze impactful work at the intersection of climate change and machine learning. Um, that's all, thank you so much.